We greet everyone with the peace of the Lord Jesus. Now, in reverence to his, the reading of His Word, we'll stand up, those who can. We're going to read the first book of the Bible, Genesis. Chapter Twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, and thirty. Amen. Verse twenty-four says the following. Then Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Now, when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the, the socket of his hip, and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaks. But he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? What is your name? What is your name? He said, Jacob. And he said, Your name shall, not, shall no, longer, no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. Now verse 30. So Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved, and my soul and my life is preserved. Amen. Amen. You may sit down. Oh, 
Aleluia. 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 Glória a Deus. The Bible says that uh, there's joy in heaven when a sinner repents. This is a month of celebration. Today is day of celebration here in, in eternity. Because tonight the Lord brought you to this place to save your soul. Hallelujah. To save our souls. The Bible says, my brethren, of a man called Jacob. Jacob, son of Abraham, son of Isaac. Um, Isaac. Jacob, he used to live with his parents. He didn't have the right to any blessing. His name was called Jacob, which meant uh, deceiver. And the life of Jacob was a life of trials. But it was also a life of perseverance. The Bible says that in a certain time of the life of Jacob, he ran out of his house because there was a threat of death from one of his family members. The worst battle that we can face is inside of your own house. You ran away and when he goes out, out of his house, he has a meeting with the Lord. He went to a place, he was tired, he took a rock and made it into um, a pillow and he had a dream, a dream from God and saw uh, uh, a step ladder that went to heaven and he saw several angels going up and down on this step ladder and the Lord made a promise to him he said that this place is called Beth Bethlehem and this is the house of, of the Lord and this is um, the door to heaven and at that day he made a vow to the Lord if I go back in peace to my home to my house the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, will also be my God. So then he departed from that place, and the Lord uh, protected him, delivered him. But the trial, they continued. His difficulties were always with, with his family. He fell in love with the girl. And I had to work 14 years in order to marry her. And there was always an argument, a confusion with his father-in-law. Always a family problem. There came a day when the Lord said, get out of this place. So then he left and Laban, his uh, father-in-law went after him. He was being pursued by his father-in-law but the Lord spoke to him that he was going to protect him and prosper him and God always fulfills his promise and he did this he, the anger of uh, Laban was um, uh, uh, calmed down and he, they had an agreement so when Jacob left after this meeting with his uh, father-in-law the Bible says that he went on on his way and on the path that Jacob was walking, you know what happened, my brethren? The Bible says that an army of angels met, met Jacob. What a wonderful thing, right? God sent an army of angels to meet with Jacob. And while the first song that was being sang, the first song in English, a brother had a, a spiritual gift, had a vision, and he saw that the heavens were opening up in this place, and thousands of angels came down from heaven, an army of angels. An army of angels were, was with Jacob and on his way, and they are, the thousands of angels are here 
also amongst us. And Jacob called that place Mahanaim, an army of angels. Also a place of bread in abundance. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And here it shows the effort from God, the struggle of God in order to bless men, to preserve men, to save men. An army of angels. That's what the Lord has sent to uh, work in our behalf. So then, when he departed from that place, the Bible says that on the following day he was going to meet his brother. Uh, the brother that he was having a, um, a problem with. They had to resolve a problem. He wanted to go back in peace to his um, land. But So in order for him to go back to the uh, land of origin, he had to resolve this problem with his brother. Uh, God, my brother, he's not a God of confusion. God's a God of peace. And Jacob, until that point, he never had peace. It was always problem and confusion. And it is said that when Jacob was alone, uh, a man appeared to him. And the Bible says that the man fought with Jacob. Sometimes you understand that Jacob fought with the man. But this, that's not true. The, the initiative was not from Jacob to fight with the, with the angel, but the initiative was from the angel to fight with Jacob, and that's very different. And once again, it shows the manifestation of the love, the grace, and the favor, and the mercy of the Lord upon man's life, independent of whoever that person is whatever that person has done because salvation is not through works it's by grace by grace you're saved it does not come from you it's, it comes from God so although he was called Jacob God never abandoned him God always gave him he didn't need a support always, all, God always fought for his salvation in the same way that God has not given up on man God has always fought for our salvation or for the salvation of our souls my brethren the angel was there to bless Jacob and Jacob was fighting with the angel The, trial, uh, the struggle of God is to save you and save me. But God finds in us a resistance. He was resisting. The Bible says that the angels fighting, fighting was not prevailing because there was a resistance. And there is a resistance from your part in the same way there was a resistance from my part of not allowing God to act and God to operate not to allow God to be my God and to be my Lord, to be my Savior. So, human reason, human understanding, what I think, what I believe, my life, the things of the heart, the blood and tradition, the feelings and thoughts. I don't want to abandon my actions, my attitudes. Is it the truth? the struggle of the Lord but God does not give up on you and God has not given up on me and he proved this with his persi persistence his great love towards your life my brother and sister because God loved the, the world in such a way that he sent this man here he sent Jesus Christ in order for whoever believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. It's a manifestation of the love of God, of the struggle of Jesus for your salvation, the effort of carrying the cross, the, the curse that was upon our lives. 
God has always, always fought and never gives up on us. And sometimes we are the ones who want to give up on Him. We want to uh, distance from Him, but He never distanced from us. He went toward Jacob, and Jacob was alone. He was lonely. He was sad. He was concerned about his own life. And God went there to give comfort, to bless Jacob. And he resisted. If, to, if today you hear my voice, do not harden your heart. Do not resist, my brother, to the project of God. God loves you. God wants to save you. God chose this night to, br to bring you here to, to Bethel, to Peniel and Manain, because He has a project of eternity for your life. He wants to put an end to this, to this argument, this family argument, because God is God, has power and authority upon all things. And the angel fought. Oh, my brother, for how long God has been fighting you, for you? To save me was not easy. It was a lot of, it was a great struggle. It was, it was a problem as well. But God didn't look to my problems. He looked to my needs. And seeing that he would not prevail against him, he touched on the joint of his rape, of his hip. God knows where to touch, right? What a wonderful thing. When it, when it seems that everything was lost, he went there and touched. Jesus touched me. Jesus touched me. And He filled my heart with peace. That's what a song says. When Jesus touched me, how the song goes? My soul was away, isn't it? Do you know that song? Uh, my soul was away from the path of the Lord. Jacob was son of Abraham, he was son of Isaac, but the soul of Jacob was still away from heaven, from the path that leads to heaven. You had the blessings of the Lord upon your life. but didn't have the God of the blessing. And at that day, the God of the blessing was once again there to fight uh, for his salvation. And the Bible says, my brethren, that we are made. God created everything through his word. But us, he created in a different way. He used his hands in order to create us. And when we pick up on any object, and in our case was clay, our fingerprints are left behind. It was an idea, an impression. And when this same hand that made us, that created us, it touches us, we know that it is the hand of our Creator, it is the hand of our Lord, it is the hand of our God. When Jacob touched, was touched by the hand of that man, his life changed. His life was transformed. At that instant, he, f he found, found out about one thing. 
he found out that he needed God in his life. When that man touched him, then he said, now I'm leaving. Then he said, no, wait a minute. I'm not going to leave you unless you bless him. So there was no longer a trial or, or, or fight. Was now, uh, uh, now there was a reconciliation. The man touched, God touched, and now is a moment for me to reconciliate with God. I will never leave you unless you bless me. Hallelujah. My brother and sister, don't leave this, this service. Don't leave this place without the blessing that God has for your life. That was everything that that man wanted to hear. That's everything that God wants to hear from, from you and from me. God, God, I need you. I recognize that I need you. I need God in my life. That's what he did at that moment. And the man asked a question to that man. And the question was the following. What is your name? Now, I'm going to ask you, my br you, Braden, did God know the name of that man? Of course. God knows everything. Everything is clear to God. But why then did he ask if he knew the name of Jacob? You know, my brother, you know why? Because that angel that is a, a, a symbol of Jesus Christ, he wanted Jacob to confess with his own voice. And the Bible says that with it says that if you confess with your mouth, right, you will be forgiven. Your iniquity will be forgotten. What is your name? So then he said that day he said Jacob. I am Jacob. I am the deceiver. I need God. I need God to change my life. We could have mentioned uh, other names. I am a person that criticizes others. A person that has a heart that is divided. I am insensitive. I am proud. I always, you know, the person that the the person that asks for money that is owed to him is always a, a person that does not pay very well. Sometimes we request things from other people and even from God. But we are filled with flaws, f filled with imperfections. What is your name? That was a question of the angel to Jacob. And he said, I am Jacob. I am the problem. I am the one who has resisted to this day the project of God. I am Jacob. What does this man complain about? He complains about his own sins. But pastor, is this a word of uh, exhortation? No. This is a word of salvation. When John the Baptist was there in the desert, he was saying, repent. You, he was asking people to repent and to convert. In the day of Pentecost, what was ne necessary for us to be saved, the, the crowd asked to Peter and the other apostles, repent and convert so that the time of the, re the refreshing may come. Jacob, he needed to confess, not to men but to God what he was in fact 
and we need to con make this confession to God who I am in fact because when we confess our sins God is just to forgive us and he confessed I am Jacob and my brethren the Bible says that because he had confessed the Lord said something that was amazing to him We will no long, you will no longer be called Jacob. You never anybody will tell that you are a deceiver. You are this or that. We'll change your name. You change your personality, your character. It will change your life. It will change your walk. The Bible says that whoever believes in Christ is a new creature in him. Everything has be, has made new. And when we see in the Bible the word of the Lord, we see this. Abram, the Lord changed his name to Abraham. S Sarah, the Lord changed to Sarah. And one of the children of Jacob that was born later, the last of his children was going to be called Benoni, son of my affliction. And God said, no, 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 no. I don't want that name. His name is going to be a curse for him. His, norm, his name is going to be called Benjamin, son of my right, ha my hand, right hand. That's be the name of the Lord. You're not going to be called Jacob. But at that moment, God changed completely the life of Jacob. And tonight, Lord wants to have a meeting, a new meeting with you. Jesus wants to change completely your life. There was, in the Bible says, my brethren, that after that experience, Jacob says, said the following, I have seen God and face to face and a servant of uh, Jacob called, called Job, of the Lord called Job said, I have heard about you, but today my eyes see you. So he had a meeting with the Lord. He saw God and his soul was saved. And tonight, God has set up a meeting with you in order to save your soul and to save our souls. And my soul was, is, was saved. This is the great manifestation of this love from God. God manifests His love not because of me, not because of you, but God manifests his love because of him, because of the love that once poured out on all our lives and our hearts. My brother, my sister, God loves you. And he wants you to have a, a life of peace. When Jacob went to, to have this meeting, he went to have this meeting with his brother. And the Lord, through a spiritual gift, has shown that there are men, there is a man that has sinned. And he came tonight to ask forgiveness from God for what he what he had done. And if you confess, if I confess my sins, he's faithful and just to forgive my sins. Uh, I no longer remember your sins. And that man has a problem. has a problem in his house and with his family. And the, the Lord says that it is the love of God towards his life which is much greater than he can could, could imagine. And God is asking him to 
surrender to God completely because God wants to use him with great power in his kingdom. The Lord also has shown another man that came to the service here completely destroyed. There's nothing left. His spiritual life was at the bottom of the barrel. And the Lord has shown that out there there's someone, somebody waiting for him to bring uh, bring trouble to his life but the Lord is uh, asking to tell you tonight that he wants to change your life when Jacob was touched by the angel he began to walk differently and somebody might might have asked Jacob why do you walk differently he would probably say because I had a meeting with God and God touched me. And tonight, God wants you to have a walk, a different walk in, in His presence. God loves you, my brother and sister. I said many times and I'm going to say once again, God loves you and He wants to save you. God wants you to live tonight with your and so transformed and walking differently. And when Jacob, he left a meeting with the angel, he already had a, a staff. But he didn't need the staff to, in order to walk. But when he left that meeting, when God touched on the joint of his r hip, now he needed to lean on that on that staff in order to walk so now his walk was directed by the staff by this holy spirit of god the bible said that on the day that jacob died he died praising the lord holding on the edge of the staff in order for everybody to understand that god throughout his life had protected and sustained him and manifested his power and great love towards his life. We ask you that you may leave this light, this place tonight with a direction from God, a direction from the Holy Spirit, leaning on Jesus Christ. Amen.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Church will stand up. Now we're going to have a word of glorification to our Lord. I want to praise your name. Because one day you extended your hand and touched us and left on our lives your fingerprints. We praise you because they carry the DNA of our God. We praise you, Lord, because every day has given us this, this strength. And you have not only helped us, but also our, our family. We praise you because you have given great deliverances, Lord. The renewal from the Holy Spirit in our lives. We praise you because every day the faith in our hearts is increased. We praise you for everything in the name of Jesus. Amen. to you that all our praise and adoration may be able to reach your house as, as an offering of sweet smell. Take us home in peace under your protection. Pray in the name of Jesus. And we also say that wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, 
the love of God, our good eternal Father, the sweet eternal consolation of the Holy Spirit be with the people of the Lord, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. My brother and sister, you are invited to come back to this place. We have service every Wednesday at 8 p.m., Thursday at 8 p.m., Saturday at 7.30 p.m., Sunday in the morning, 10.30 in the morning, and Sunday night at 7.30. You are invited to to come back many, many more times so that together we may glorify this God that has every day fought for our salvation and to, for our lives. If you need an assistance, a prayer, remain where you are and raise your hand and we are going to give you the, the proper assistance. There is a couple there. At I would like to remind the church that in December we are going to have our seminar in the region of Orlando. Look for the responsibles for the group of assistants in order to um, subscribe and receive more information. 15, 16, and 17 of December. December. Right. From this Monday, it begins our period of of, of dedication to the Lord. <laughs> 